The deputy governor of Edo State, Comrade Philip Shaibu, has approached the court to seek protection from his boss, Governor Gordon Obasaki, to avoid an imminent impeachment and removal from office. In a motion of notice brought before the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja and made available to the media on Thursday, the appellant seeks an order of interloc interlocutory injunction stopping the respondent or their agents from harassing, intimidating, embarrassing or preventing the applicant from carrying out the functions of his office as Deputy Governor of Ado State, including attending State Executive Council meetings and other functions pending the determination of the substantive suit. When Mr. Obasaki due to relinquish power in November of 2024, there are speculations that Mr. Shaibu intends to succeed his principle. Impeachment of, his, of deputy governors by state parliament in Nigeria is often induced by governors. Well, joining us to discuss this is Honorable Shadrach Udube. He is a convener at Edo PDP Unity Forum, and he will used to be a member of, of the chairman of IPAC in Edo State. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good evening. I'm happy to be with you. Great. Let's go back in time to the beginning of the crisis between the governor and his deputy. Uh, sometime last year, we, when we started hearing a lot more about this, um, many uh, in the PDP had raised eyebrows. Some have even blamed the deputy governor of hobnobbing with members of the opposition. But is it not safe to say that the deputy governor and, of course, indeed the governor, were members of the APC before they became members of the PDP? So shed some light to what is happening right now in your state. And what we have is a very is a is a clear cut of um, the pursuit of personal ambition. To a very large extent, uh, it, it's an idea of it's the issue of an ambition not properly uh, uh, carried out. The deputy governor had been very close to the governor. They had come a long way in their political journey. Both of them moved from the All Progressive Congress, moved into the People's Democratic Party in the year 2020, and got re-elected both as governor and deputy governor without a change. And um, in recent times, we observe very clearly that the deputy governor has lost an ambition of wanting to take over from the current governor of Edo State. And for that singular reason, he had um, wanted to express his interest demanding that the governor should endorse him in support of his governorship aspiration. But the governor, because in, in, it's still not within the, the time frame, the calendars are not out, and they cannot really the time to vote for elections. Governance is still ongoing, but we're also surprised just to see the deputy governor rush to Abuja to get a restraining order, restraining the governor and his cronies, or perhaps anybody acting under his instructions from impeaching the deputy governor. But one, one would have noticed clearly is that the deputy governor I wanted to engage explicitly within the People's Democratic Party, but appears not to have the requisite political clout to muzzle his way through. And mind you also, there's the issue of zoning. Because there are many of us who are Democrats to the core, we believe very clearly that in as much as zoning or rotation as a principle of power sharing is not enshrined in the Nigerian constitution, that for there to be easy, equal access to power and empowerment, for there to be even development, that power must rotate. And as such, the, there's a particular senatorial district in Edo State, known as the Edo Central. They have never produced a deputy governor since the return of democracy in 1999. And the only opportunity they had in presenting a governor, the governor lasted for about 16 months, not even up to a year. And that's the challenge we've had. And persons have said, since the past, the immediate past governor was Adam Salio Shomle was from a donut, from the, uh, the Esako speaking ethnic group of a donut, and the governor, Gordon Obaseki from a do south, it is only natural. They haven't done eight years each, the power returns to a do center to give that people a sense of belonging. But the deputy governor, who is from a donut, is insisting that power should return back to a donut. And what makes it even funny is that him and the former governor of a state are both from the same local government and the same world. And it's irritating, it's nauseating that the man has not been able to carry, to guide his ambition carefully. But uh, he, this action of his by rushing to the court is ill-fated. It has not sat down well with many of us in the party who have been working as seriously hard to build unity within the party okay. because his followers have been making some divisive statements. Even before now, he had made some um, some moves filibusting with the All Progressive Congress that has been perceived to be antithetical to the growth and development of the People's Democratic Party. It, it, it hasn't got that down with the people. Many of us it has been alleged 
that perhaps he is making moves to reunite with his uh, former benefactor, Adam Sali Oshomole, and that is why he's trying to obtain a restraining order so that even when he engages with the All Progressive Congress, he will not be kicked out of office. But for me, all of these things are, are, are poorly timed. And uh, if he has, if, uh, for you being the second, uh, the second strongest, uh, highest holding political officer in the state as a deputy governor, you certainly want to be governor. You can go about it the right way. You could okay. declare your aspirations. You could go around posting banner, mobilizing your others. Then it, it, it's very much that the governor must endorse you to be governor. And that's the challenge we apparently have with uh, Comrade Philip Shaibu currently in those states. Um, again. Before I come to you know you the allegation of him trying to force the hand of the governor, um, is it true that at the time when they moved to the PDP and became PDP members, flag bearers, and of course become settled into the party, that members of the PDP, especially those at the helm of affairs, did not welcome those who were supporters and cronies of the deputy governor? Could this have been one of the other reasons? why there's been an unsettling um, within the camp of the deputy governor. That's one. Secondly, what is wrong with a deputy governor wanting to throw his hat into the ring, being that, of course, the PDP had done that, even at the national level, even when it was not the time for former Vice President Atiku Abubakar to run for you know, that office. The, the party threw it open for all to you know, uh, run, and then made the best man win. Why can't that be the same case in a dose state? Yeah, I, I, for the first question you asked, um, the, when they both entered into the party as at um, 2020, it was the, the, that, that storm of the week that the, the governor insisted. He said every other condition that was required to be met to ensure that both him and the deputy governor flies in the same tickets must be done. He, he vehemently resisted the political leaders and masters. All of those persons that consider themselves as political, as principalities within the People's Democratic Party. And ensure that he swam into the race with the deputy governor. And um, to a large extent, the man was received. The election went out smoothly. Even those persons who had resisted the central eventually became part of the campaign council that campaigned vigorously to, ele to elect the governor and his deputy. But to like that show the, the level of commentary. Beyond that, we could see a particular time when the deputy governor made some statements uh, attacking the national aim of affairs of the People's Democratic Party. And he was openly chastised by the governor of River State, Nelson Wiki, where, where, where he openly questioned the, 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 the right of the deputy governor to challenge the governor's council or the leaders of the party, calling him a mere deputy governor, even going as far as asking who is your father. We, we, we saw the, 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 what, what the governor of Edosei did. He took a two-page avatoria on the national dailies where he chastised the, the, the governor of uh, River State and, and defended vehemently the personality of his deputy governor. That was a level of closeness, a level of work. And you can also agree with me that the name Felicia Ebu resonates across the political firmament of Nigeria as one of the most uh, uh, powerful deputy governors recorded in the history because uh, the, the, the party... Had given him the, the governor had given him the latitude to to operate freely across all facets and sector of the state. Mm -hmm. has, has given him the latitude to operate the, 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 to, to freely superintend over special affairs in the state, and that to a large extent as he apparently appeared to be overindulged. So they have been very close working relationship. The man has gained superior political relevance. As I speak to you, I'm from a donut, principally from Owa's local government. In that particular, I don't know. The government practically carved out a state within a state for the deputy governor to superintend as a political leader of all the, polit the party structures in a donut. So for the deputy governor to say that uh, they were not a good job, that totally is not out of place. In the last last of every election, the deputy governor was in charge of ensuring that candidates were selected across the eight, the six local government of a donut to, to represent us at the House of Assembly. So the deputy governor had the laxity, had the capacity to freely express himself, had the support of the governor all throughout his stay in the most democratic pattern, party where governors took place. My question, again, again, my question again, Honorable, what is wrong with the deputy governor declaring his intent to run for governor? I mean, I know, I, I, I know that I know that the, he needs to seek the consent of his principal for that to happen, and we already know that there's a precedence of sorts. If a governor is not anointing his deputy, then he cannot go 
for that office. But then what is wrong constitutionally or in your, in your party's constitution, is there anything that states that a deputy governor cannot, no matter where he's from, declare his intention to run for office? He has his, his, his candidacy and his intention, his ambition, they are all legitimate and constitutionally they are legal. He has the capacity, the he has the resources, he has the political exposure to run for governor. To a large extent, he can also boast that he has the political exposure and experience. There is nothing wrong. What is wrong is trying to untwist the governor, insisting that the governor must endorse him for governor. That is what is wrong. That the governor, who currently stands as the custodian of the party, must single-handedly pick him and support Support him to become governor. That is exactly what is wrong. If he has a, an ambition to be governor, and yeah, the governor appears to have given him the language that I'm supporting you, then he can go out in the open and declare. Mind you, he has not declared officially that he's running for governor. His posters for governor are not anywhere around the streets in the government, around anywhere in the state. What we've observed in recent time is some funny uh, anti-party moves. That's what I can clearly tell you. What we observe is that the, the governor, the deputy governor, even when they had the House of Assembly election, wanted to pick within the members elect who would be their speaker. The deputy governor made some funny moves at the APC because the APC had eight lawmakers as at then, as at now currently, and he wanted them to bring a speaker from Edo Central, which would not give credence to having a governor from Edo North. And the governor had said, that since power will soon be rotated to a donut and uh, those central had produced the last speaker, now a donut, uh, sorry, a donut central has produced the last speaker. Now a donut is not the time for a donut to produce a speaker for the donut status of assembly. This move was very many resisted by the followers of Philip Shaibu, who saw it as a threat to the candidacy of their master. And they went as far as filibusting with the APC lawmakers, trying to thwart the collective decision of the party, having zone speakership to a donut. So all of those moves, the actions and inactions of the deputy governor, if summed up, can be can, is tantamount to impeachment. But the governor has not even told that line. The governor has not, is never interested in impeaching. Oh, for, as far as we are concerned in those states, governance was merely taking place. All the deputy governor needed to do was to declare his interest that yes, I want to be the governor. And I don't people will massively vote for you. There are persons within the party. The governor in himself cannot appoint a candidate or anoint a candidate and the candidate will eventually become governor if the people do not choose who their governor is. The prerogative is within the people of those state to elect their governor. So the deputy governor has not carried out his ambition in a clear and open manner. He okay. appears to have an hidden agenda. And some have said they had lost ground with the People's Democratic Party. His strength in the party is not strong enough, and he wants to reunite with the boss in the APC. And that's why he's trying to engage in this polar role to destabilize and truncate the party's interest and ensure that when he goes back to the APC, he will be fully welcomed and supported for his divisive role within the party. Lovely. I like the last line that you, you, you're you saying that allegedly he wants to, he might want to be moving back to the APC. But why the drama? If the deputy governor wants to move back to the APC, he would just resign his, you know, um, as the deputy governor and move to the APC. I'm guessing that it's not that easy. But then again, could it be that based on these allegations that you are making, that is why allegedly the governor wants to impeach him, to get rid of him earlier than he should? Where we had spoken, I have friends, I am a principal, I'm a chieftain in the party, you know, is where I belong. I have friends who are members of the State of Assembly. I had reached out to even the majority leader, and he had said there are no plans of such. All of them can be lined. There's no there's no, there's, there's no paper proof, whether written or spoken. All of us were shocked. We were taken aback when we saw the restraining order being secured by the deputy governor. He had just merely calculated that for the level, the, 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 the series of engagements that he will be having, he may come across as unholy among going well considered from the view of um, party loyalty and uh, for that reason he might his position as deputy governor might be threatened and for you know he, of course you know and you and i know that the new electoral law does not permit a deputy governor to, to decamp into a party and retain its seat. So all of those challenges may want to be as calculated. And certainly, too, he may want to also get the restraining order or to whip out the sentiment to create the illusion that he is being marginalized, is being frustrated, is being intimidated within the party, which is not so. But if you ask me, why would the deputy governor want to move into the All Progressive Congress? And I'll give you a few reasons. First of all, the deputy governor has gone into five different elections since he had been a member of the People's Democratic Party. He, first of all, went into a, he went to the pools when he was when we were contesting for being a deputy governor together in a joint ticket with the governor in 2020. In that election, quote anywhere, we had the greatest loss on the people who suffered the highest loss in Philip Shaibu's local government. 
ASAC of West local government. We lost the margin of our 10,000 votes. He was not able to mobilize, conscientize, and galvanize his supporters for the People's Democratic Party. Because Adam Salio Shomule, who is a chieftain, the leader of the Progressive Congress, hails from that particular local government. In the last general election we had, the presidential election, he lost the local government. The senatorial election, he lost the local government. The House of Representatives, he lost the local government. The House of Assembly, he lost the local government woefully to, 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 to all to all progressive Congress. And I can speak to him very clearly, he has not gone to the polls for once and secured any victory under the People's Democratic Party. So many of his followers have advised him very clearly that uh, you appear not to have a political destiny or a future within the People's Democratic Party. Why not go back to your boss and seek redress? All of these things are in the, in the in, in, in the arena of speculation. But what irritates us, most of us, within the People's Democratic Party, is why we do not want to engage in some form of decisive role to to, to, to not, do I want to destroy the unity of the party that we fought hard to gain before you now move into the progressive Congress? Moving to the progressive is fine, but you don't have to play the spoilers role, you don't have to play the wicked role because he has been alleged. That's what the followers say if he's not giving a ticket in the People's Democratic okay. Party, they will either sink or swim with the ship. And okay. we've argued, say, why we such an arrangement be put together when we in the People's Democratic Party have worked as it doesn't hard to enthrone you into office. So okay. the challenge has been enormous, and I can tell you very clearly, he does not even have the political support as many people are claimed because his supporters are making it look as though once okay. he's handed over the ticket, will be costed to victory. But that's not true because the man has lost series of elections. All, All of right. the candidates from Echo, three local governments under him, they lost woefully in the House of Assembly. The ones whom he had imposed in the one East also lost woefully. So he appears not to be able to, uh, with his own capacity, the availability of resources and power. Well, well, I can tell, party, I can tell <laughs> that the PDP in Edo State is really pained by um, the moves by the deputy governor. I can even tell from the pain in your voice. But finally, yes, yeah, oh, just hold on, hold on, because, hold on, I'm because because I want us to wrap up. We have just a minute. Um, I hear that um, amid the persisting cold war between the deputy governor and the governor, um, the the ch chief Mike Ogiadome uh, and a former chief judge um, have interfered by summoning the duo to broker peace. And I want to add, what is the relationship currently between the governor and the deputy in closing? And do you see peace on the radar anytime soon? Yes, I see peace on the radar. If the deputy governor will be willing and ready to go about his ambition in the right way. It, 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 it is clear that it is legal and it is, it is, it is encouraging for every man to aspire. But the truth is that the way and manner you go about it goes a long way to tell you about your competence and your character. And then um, we in the People's Democratic Party have suffered lots of division, right from this um, wicked and be fashion in the state that had uh, broken the party and made us suffer humongous loss. We are just struggling to come back from that loss. And now we are seeing another senior leader in the party try to introduce some divisive components. We are, we are pained, we are disturbed, because we believe that we are unable to put our ass in order and engage productively in the next uh, gubernatorial elections, we may not even stand a chance. Mm. And that's why this whole, this, this, whole, uh, the, this whole development is causing shock to major stakeholders within the party. And I strongly hope that the governor will want to reach out to the deputy governor, call him to order, create uh, provisions, because the man appeared there. And lot, having been a deputy governor, there are only a few positions you can aspire. But they, they will see how they can find a middle ground. Ogatome was the former deputy governor in the state, and I hope they will to find a middle ground. Okay. Because this division, if allowed to go on rampage, will lead to the destruction of the party. Well, I want to say thank you. Um, Shedrak Udubai is the convener at Doe PDP Unity Forum, and he was also the IPAC in Edo State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We're hoping that um, something peaceful will, um, you know, resurface sometime in the future. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you. Good night. Dear. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. I'm Mary Ann Ocon. Don't forget, you can play catch up with all our previous episodes on Plus Politics. Just go to our YouTube page, that's Plus TV Africa. And of course, uh, you can watch all of our previous episodes. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow as we bring you more talks on development. Good night. <laughs>